Hi, my name is Ron Morasco, and I'm at the parish of St. Andrews in Kent, Connecticut. And I'm here today to chat a little bit and express my enthusiasm for somebody named Lancelot Andrews. It is his feast day uh, coming up on the 26th in the lectionary. Um, he's a very easy person to be very interested in because just for these two facts alone, one is that T.S. Eliot stole one of his really great beginnings to a poem from Lancelot Andrews and somebody named Kurt Vonnegut, a writer who many of you love, said of Lancelot Andrews that he was the most important writer in the English language. Um, so this great genius that is celebrated by the Episcopal Church was born in 1555. I think one of the things that most geniuses have, their first genius is the genius of knowing when to be born. Um, and uh, Andrews was born, I think it was uh, 17 years before the poet John Donne, and I guess nine years before William Shakespeare. And at a period of time where both in language and religion, his two great abilities, it was a mighty good time to uh, be born. He was a favorite of both. Queen Elizabeth I and James I, and that didn't happen too often. Um, it was said of James I loved him so much that not only did James I, who was, had a rather randy way of speaking, <laughs> he used to temper himself and kind of self-bleep when Lancelot Andrews was around because he so respected him, but um, he also supposedly slept with uh, copies of Andrews' sermon under his pillow. And I, I understand this because I first became very enamored of him by uh, reading a book on uh, the uh, priest and the great poet uh, George Herbert. And in this book on Herbert, I r began to read about Andrews and they quoted from one of his sermons. And I was so startled by um, the way he wrote. This is his description of um, the passion of Jesus. His skin and flesh rent with the whips and scourges, his hands and feet wounded with the nails, his head with the thorns, his very heart with the spear point. All his senses, all his parts laden with whatsoever wit or malice could invent. And there were two things that were so startling to me to remind people that the piercing was at the heart. And then this notion that the, the passion was about taking on whatever wit or malice could invent, the cruelest ways to treat uh, human beings. And he said about Jesus, his blessed body given as an anvil to be beaten upon. Well, as somebody that loves language, by the way, I was a professor for 27 years at Loyola Marymount University, as you could probably tell from my threadbare sweater. Um, but as somebody that loved language and theater, I was so struck by him. And then as I began to read more about him, I was rather touched by the sort of person he was as a teacher. One of the things he used to do was walk with students. Uh, this was something Aristotle also did. He called, Aristotle's school was called the peripatetic school, which meant he used to walk around. So teachers, may, maybe in this time of social distancing, give it a try. Although you have to be a very good teacher to compete with what's going on around you. But clearly Andrews was, and this was one of the things that he did. And they said about the way he spoke, that it was casualness itself. And I thought that's so interesting, this man who was known as for such learning in such language, when he spoke was so casual. They said of Andrews that he spoke 15 modern languages and then six ancient ones. So to have somebody that was so smart and so learned and so brilliant, but also so um, comfortable with, with common people, uh, even though he was a, a professor and a bishop, he also was known 
to keep pretty much office hours. For hours a day, he would sit in the church and just wait for anybody that wanted to come and, uh, and, and, and talk with him. And so that, that common touch was so interesting, juxtaposed with not only his friendship and admiration of kings and queens, um, but that somebody that was so learned was also so common in certain ways. Um, the, the, the poetry that uh, T.S. Eliot borrowed from him is the beautiful beginning of the poem, uh, The Journey of uh, the Magi. And it begins with the very famous lines, a cold coming we had of it, just the worst time of year for a journey, and such a journey, the ways deep, the weather sharp, the very dead of winter. And I thought it's so interesting to have this great linguist also so able to understand the common aspect of what was so hard about that. While we're all sitting home in our warm houses thinking of Christmas carols, you need somebody like a Lancelot Andrew to remind you a cold coming they had of it. It was cold and a certain kind of cold. And so this mix of the learned and the common, uh, the very sort of high church, uh, Andrews was a lover of certainly of all kinds of um, ritual. He writes about it very extensively. He had his own chapel, which seemed to be kitted out with all kinds of remarkable, um, the uh, equipage of, of um, uh, the, the, the sacraments, silver and gold and cushions in his own private chapel. And yet he had this prayer book that he put together over the years that is a very passionate piece of writing. And they said that he used to weep so often that some people referred to his little private prayer book, his commonplace book where he wrote down prayers as being his handkerchief. And he was said to die with it being held in his hand. Uh, I'm, I, as a professor, I, I'm so devoted to people that are able to take the highest aspects of learning and yet bring it to a very human level. And this is the man that was responsible for the words of the 23rd Psalm. And this was why Kurt Vonnegut said he was such an important contributor to our language. If you just take the smallest little section of it, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff comfort me. 30 words, 26 of them, the shortest, smallest, most common words that are used to set like diamonds the four, four words that have two syllables, shadow, valley, evil, comfort. And in those four words, set like diamonds, in those simple common words, you have the whole story that he's trying to get across. You know, having uh, taught at a Jesuit school for many years, I, I noticed that a lot of the Catholic saints are pious, but a lot of the ones that are celebrated in the Episcopalian church are both pious, but it, wonderfully interesting. And the great thing about Andrews was that it wasn't contradictory that he was high and low, smart and common, passionate and intellectual. Those aren't contradictions. He wasn't contradictory, he was comprehensive. He took in the whole of life. Um, the writer, the Roman writer Terence said, I will hold nothing alien to me that is human. And that's what Lancelot Andrews was. He was somebody that had a ravenous appetite for words and ideas and feelings, and he both took it in and was able to give it back out in some of the most glorious language we have. So it's a joy to be able to um, discover people like this, as I did the way those of you that are nerds know. You find a reference in a book, it leads you to something else, it leads you to something else, and lo and behold, he is very rightly and smartly being celebrated on the 26th by the Episcopal Church. So to Lancelot Andrews, we say thank you for the large life you lived and how much you were able to share with us. Bye from the parish of St. Andrews in beautiful Kent.
<laughs> on a nice day. <laughs>